a lot of people do poorly in Cannes. So for example, I bring my family, you know, we have a villa in Cap d'Antibes, I like to meet new people, and when you meet new people and you like them, yeah. maybe you're going to do business. But I don't yeah. come saying, I have to go from nine to nine, to, you know, yeah. at night, and, uh, two hours and two hours. I think that's a way to fail. You have okay. to make time. And I think everyone, we're going to do a, you know, we're going to get consultants, and we're going to do a think tank, and we're going to talk to Shane, and we're going to yeah. figure this out, or we're going to buy a company. Yeah. And they don't end up doing anything. Yeah. Pick a direction, go for it. If it works, great, you're smart. If it doesn't work, fine. You've learned, okay, that doesn't work, let's do another thing. And I think when you stop doing that, you know, when the, sh the shark stops swimming, the yeah. shark dies. So many companies are so afraid of taking risk that they sort of are galvanized into inactivity. Yeah. And, oh, we don't want to lose what we have. Well, yeah. you've just done it. And at the heart of those brands, if you're The Guardian, if you're The Wall Street Journal, if you're The Times, yeah. Is it trust? Is that the thing that they have? The problem that you're going to have with trust is all you need is one. We knew Al Qaeda didn't really have anything to do with Iraq, but we just said that. You know, you yeah. need one thing and that kills your whole business. It's very difficult. I mean, we're known as the trusted for Gen Y. Yeah. I'm like, look, you know, at some point we're going to fuck up. You know, when I talk to my board, I say, look, we're going to we're going to fail a, a lot of things that we do but we'll end up ahead of everybody else because that's how you learn. You were talking a little bit earlier about risk. Do you think that the Journal, the Guardian, the New York Times would take the risks that you're taking journalistically? I'm thinking, you know, ISIS, ISIS etc. Why is it that you got there and they didn't? Well, I think everybody would like that story, you know, embedding with ISIS. I think the reality of it is, is they're closing their bureau. And so they don't have people who can get in there as quickly. And we're opening bureaus as fast yeah. as they're closing there. The only way you can get embedded with ISIS is to have somebody who actually isn't going to get their head chopped off. But because we had done a lot of stuff in Palestine with this very well-known Palestinian filmmaker, he was allowed to come in. And because of that, because he was part of our Middle Eastern Bureau, we got the scoop. How do you feel about the, when you're taking those risks? Sure. Is that scary for you from a personal responsibility point of view? Well, I vote 95% of the board. So I can get mad at myself and I'm sort of self-eviscerating when we fail because I'm essentially the Stalin of ice. So I can just say, well, this is what's going to happen. Um, that at some point will change. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like Mao. I want to always have the cultural revolution, always have the interns take over. You mentioned in there in your talk about the importance of continually acquiring yeah. and the rigor that it gives you and your yeah. business of constantly doing deals. To us, you know, one of the reasons why we're the so-called unicorn is because we actually make money and, and our margin is going up. Yeah. And so I think that comes from deal making. And if you're not deal making, you're not, as anyone knows when they do a big deal and goes through due diligence, you rip out the wires, you rip out your guts, you yep. show everything. Yep. And so when you do that, you go, mm, actually, yep. that's not very good, or yep. that's really good, or this person's amazing, or that person's shit. Yep. And I think that unless you go through that process continually, you're not gonna force yourself to change. Thank you, Shane, for making time. Thanks very much.